This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we'll walk you through the steps to build your own fabric hammock out of Sunbrella fabric. We'll also show you how to weave the hammock harness. After that, we'll show you how to make an easy fabric hammock. Then, for those who prefer a polyester filled hammock, which does require more fabric and labor, that type of hammock will also be shown. The two hammocks that are shown in this video are large enough to accommodate one or two persons. The video is separated into four chapters, each with a detailed step-by-step -step instructions for each of the processes, and a full materials list at the end of each of the chapters. The last chapter will show how to make a pillow for any one of the hammocks. We'll start out by showing you how to make a hammock harness clue knot. This is a suspension system that uses clue cords to hold up the ends of the hammock. These cords are weaved into a triangular shape, making the harness. Each hammock requires two of these harnesses or suspension systems. Angela from the Sayerite Loft is going to show us how to do the weaving process. The easiest way to make a jig is to take an old pallet and then use some screws and drill it at the appropriate location on the pallet. Be sure the pallet will fit these general parameters. This harness will accommodate a hammock that fits two persons. Angela has just finished attaching all of the screws at the appropriate location on the pallet and as she measures up you can see that top screw is 40 inches. We need to mark a location that is 5 inches under that location for where our ring top will be located. So she's used a sharpie marker and marked that location. Now she'll use some rope and tie the ring, whether it be a D-ring or a round ring, at that location so the ring's top is at that 5 inch mark down from the top screw. It takes about 170 feet of rope per harness and we've strung the rope out on the floor to make it easier for our weaving process. She'll start by leaving 5 feet of cord along the top of the pallet running off the top and down the right side. Then she'll grab the rope make a loop and run it through the ring, as shown here in the video, then down to the first screw to the right at the bottom. She will then grab the leg that hangs off to the left from the loop that she just created and loop it around the second screw at the bottom. Then just repeat the process over and over again till you get to the other side. Unfortunately, all the line that we laid out on the floor is getting caught on shelving and carts, <laughs> which makes it more difficult. It is recommended to not make this looping tight. In fact, a little bit of slack will make the next weaving process much easier. So do it just about the same as Angela is doing now. It is important to follow this procedure exactly. You must go into the ring from the forward or the front side as shown here, and down out the back. We're going to skip ahead here and go to the end. The procedure is the same all the way across the bottom. And here's the last loop. Hopefully you'll have five feet of extra cord approximately. And it looks like we do. We should be set. You'll notice there are loops to the back and loops running from the front. We want to find the first loop which is coming from the back side of the ring and push a dowel rod behind it and then in front of the second loop which is in front of the ring. Then repeat this until the rod is weaved all the way to the other side. So this process is back to the front and front to the back. The back runs to the back of the ring. The rod is inserted to make it easy to pass the length of cord through the loops. So now she will take the cord hanging along the top of the pallet to the right and pass it through the loops following the rod that has been inserted. Come behind it so you're going to grab this line when you go through.
After that side of the cord is passed through, it is secured to that screw on the left side, and then the cord to the left is passed through in the same manner. Now the cord to the left is secured to the screw, but first we need to tension it slightly. So she pulls on the lines and then tensions it to the screw to the right. Now we can pull out that rod and we'll repeat that same procedure, except this time we'll have the loop in front to the back and the back loop to the front. Now the front goes to the back and the back comes to the front. And if you get lost, just look down from your nail up. After the rod is inserted, again, we'll start with that uh, right side cord and run it through following the rod. We'll make sure you grab this line so it's going in front of it. It is important to skip that first loop and that's why Angela noted that you need to go in front of that loop. The left side always easily follows straight through. That's two rows catching all of them. Now we're going to start skipping one. So to the next back. Now that we have two rows completed, now we'll start to skip a loop with each insertion of the rod. That's what Angela is doing here. So the next time she inserts the rod, she'll skip yet another loop. On the right side, you always want to visually make sure you don't grab that first string. Don't want to grab that. Now these rows are free. This one I'm going to skip. I'm going to go to the next one in the back and pull it forward. I'm going to make sure I don't grab the second row. Now 
We want to show you the whole process, but uh, we don't want to bore you either, so we're showing it in double time in portions of this video. I don't want to grab this one. See, it's behind it. So I'm going to come down, make sure I come out on the right side of it before I thread it. So this one is free. First two rows, you grab all of them. After that, one less. I don't want this one. I'm gonna grab the next one from behind. Now, I don't want to grab this one, so I come behind it. Don't want to grab this one. Let's go to the next one behind. That one's clear. You'll want to keep repeating this process until you have only three loops left. We're going to skip to that part now. There are now three loops left. And now all we have to do is run the cord past the last two with the middle one going to the back. We'll then pass the right cord through following the rod and then the left cord through. The final step is to run the rod behind the middle loop, then the cords. We'll now remove the uh, D-ring via that rope at the top screw and we'll remove the loops at the bottom as well. We'll take it to our workbench and tighten everything up. I don't want to lose these. So I'm just going to loosely keep those together. Everything is woven perfectly. Now we just need to pull on each one of the cords to tighten up our assembly. You'll notice if you look at the D-ring, where the uh, loops come across the D-ring, they are not tight, but by pulling on each one of the cording loops, we can tighten them up. Not only should you pull on the actual cords that are coming out, but pull on the loops that are on the side. That will tighten it up there as well. So pull so that you're always working the excess towards the bottom point of the triangle. Now she'll remove that knot that she placed in the cord and she'll transfer or make a new knot that's closer to the point of the triangle. That's all there is to making the suspension system for the hammock. We've done it for one side, now we need to make another one for the second side. We'll not be showing that. Cut off the excess line with a hot knife. We're using the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife here. We'll show you next how to make the spreader bars. The harness utilizes a spreader board and those lines run through it and attach to the hammock. 
We've purchased the oak boards from a hardware store and we've measured it to 62 inches. From the center of the board, we'll start measuring two and a half inches and place a mark. We're going to use this marker instead so we can see where the marks go. So from the center, we placed a mark that was uh, half of two and a half inches and then just marked two and a half inches all the way down the length of the 62 inch board. This board is one and a half inches by three quarter inches and we placed those marks on the three quarter inch side. We should have 24 marks after we're done marking it on the 62 inch length board. Yep, 24. Now we also need to put a mark at the end that is one inch away from the edge of the board. This last hole will accommodate a rope that runs through the loops securing the harness to the hammock. We'll show you that later on. So we placed a mark there and also one inches away from this end of the board, right there. Now let's cut this board to the right size, 62 inches. We'll now take this board to a drill press and we have a jig or a vise set up on the uh, base of the drill press because we'll be using a drill press to drill each one of these holes and we'll drill through the board at each one of those marks that we placed on the edge of this board. We're using a quarter inch drill bit and drilling right through every one of these holes all the way through the bottom side. If you like you could also make a countersink hole on both the top side and the bottom side but it's really not necessary. After that's done, we'll sand the board carefully on all sides. This is a pre-finished board, but we want to be sure that the inside of the holes are finished as well. Here we're using a wood stain and following the directions on the can. Once that's done, we'll uh, take a rag and go over the board carefully. We probably should use gloves, uh, but we chose not to. After we have it stained and we have the holes on the inside coated well, we're going to spray it with some varnish. You'll need two spreader boards per hammock. Here's a list of the tools and materials that were used to make the hammock harness. The materials list includes enough of the product to make two of the hammock clues. Next up, we're going to show you how to make the easy hammock made from Sunbrella marine grade fabric or Sunbrella sling fabric, available from Sailrite. Now that you know how to make the hammock's clue, we'll show you next how to make the hammock itself out of fabric. This chapter shows the easiest and least expensive way to make a hammock. If you want to try your hand at a more challenging fiber filled hammock, that soon follows. This easy Sunbrella hammock only requires 99 inches by 60 inch width Sunbrella fabric. This is a marine grade fabric. Then we'll be creating a one inch single hem on the two long sides. We did not video creating or sewing the one inch single hem on each of the sides. And those sides of the fabric, the marine grade Sunbrella, are in finished edges so you don't have to worry about using a hot knife. After the single hem is placed on the two long edges, on the two short ends we'll be creating a slight convex curve. This curve will help to create a small dip in the hammock to keep the occupant from feeling like they may fall out of the hammock. To create that curve, Angela will measure one inch in from the two ends of the fabric where we created the one inch hem. She'll mark it with a soapstone pencil. You could make the dip a little bit more by making it one and a half inches if you choose. Then she'll fold the material in half to find the center of the hammock. Then she'll mark that location with the soapstone pencil. This is an easy way to create a curve. After that is done, then she'll fold the lip of the fabric over to find the quarter position of the fabric and she'll mark it on the fold and also on the flat piece underneath the fold. At that quarter location she'll mark the fabric in a half inch because we're using a one inch curve here. If you're using one and a half you would mark it at three quarter inch in from the edge. Mark it on the folded portion and also the flat portion under it. Now we can simply use our yardstick 
and line it up to the mark on the end with the quarter position mark and strike a line from the quarter position all the way to the end of the fabric. This is a neat way to make a curve. Obviously this isn't a perfect curve. It has some straight legs to it, but it will create shape to hold the occupant in the hammock. And then at the center location, just mark it all the way to the center spot from the quarter position. And do the same thing on the opposite half. We're using a soapstone pencil which easily cleans up if you make a mistake with water. However, most of these lines are going to be hidden in the uh, fabric folds, so you could use a number two pencil as well. Then we cut it with scissors. There's no reason to use a hot knife because a double fold or double hem will be created here. Now we'll use the basting tape for canvas, part number 129, and we'll baste it on the edge and fold the material over uh, one inch. So this is folded back one inch and the basting tape helps, helps to hold everything in place so that you can take it to the sewing machine and nothing moves. Then we'll use that basting tape again on top of that fold to create our double hem. There is shape built into this edge so you may have a few wrinkle spots and that's quite acceptable because it has a curve. The opposite end has already been created, sewn, and the grommets installed, and we're using that as a template to determine where the grommets should be placed on this hem as well. We haven't sewn it yet. We'll be showing that next. And now we've taken it over to the sewing machine and we sew a straight stitch to secure the double hem in place all along its length, reversing at the beginning and the end to lock our stitch in place. Once the hem has been created on both ends, we can now install the grommets. The grommets should be spaced two and a half inches on centers apart from each other. The edge of the fabric needs to have the same number of grommets as the lines of loop coming off the clue assembly. We're now using a number one hole cutter and the premium cutting block on the bottom side to prevent damage to the hole cutter and a heavy mallet to punch the holes in the fabric at each one of those two and a half inch locations. And then we'll use a spur grommet. This is a number one spur grommet. And we use the number one die set for spur grommets to set each one of those grommets in the holes. The male portion of the grommet goes through the hole, is placed on the die set, and then the female portion with the teeth goes on top. And then give it a few blows with the hammer. Here's what that convex curve looks like when it's finished, and this will help to hold the occupant in the hammock. Now we'll take the spreader bar and insert one of the uh, cord loops through the second hole from the end. We want to leave that last hole not filled. We'll be using a rope for that. Then continue down the length of the spreader bar, inserting each one of the appropriate cords in each one of those holes. All the way to the opposite end, leaving the last hole unfilled. Once that's done, we'll take the spreader bar to the hammock. And we'll feed each one of the loops through the grommets. The loop should be on the side where the double hem has been finished. Then we'll install a quarter inch rope through the last hole, go through each one of the loops of the uh, eighth inch leech line all the way to the opposite end. Once we're at that end, we'll take that quarter inch rope, feed it through the spreader bar hole, the last hole in the spreader bar, and then we'll tie a knot on the end of the rope. And that secures the uh, loops to our spreader bar. That's all that's required to create your own easy sunbrella hammock. This hammock will accommodate a mounting structure that's about 14 to 16 feet apart. The material and tools list for this easy hammock is next. This list does not include the supplies to make the hammock's pillow. It will be shown after the next chapter showing how to make a fiber-filled hammock with pleats. The Sayerite Loft used a Tanara standard clear sewing thread. A V92 polyester can be used as well. Next up, we're going to show how to make a polyester-filled pleated umbrella hammock. 
Not only is the construction a little bit more difficult for this pleated polyester filled sunbrella hammock, but because we've chosen a striped sunbrella awning grade fabric, we need to piece several pieces together. Let's get started and discuss patterning for this hammock. The raw fabric size is still the same, 60 inches in width and 99 inches in length. But because the Sumbrella awning grade fabric is only 46 inches wide, we'll need to join two of those panels together to make our 60 inch width. Here Angela is measuring the two panels of fabric and she uses the Sayerite Edge hot knife to cut the fabric, though scissors can be used because all edges will be hemmed. Now she's laid the fabric on top of itself, there's no right side or wrong side, and now is determining how wide the stripe will be so she knows where to position her stitch that will join these two panels together. So to consistently keep the same stripe width across the length of the panel, she's transferring the measurement over here to the edge of the fabric which needs to be sewn together. So she needs to place her stitch at that location for our particular stripe. She'll now use the basting tape, part number 129, along the edge of the bottom panel, and then she'll base the top panel to that edge, so the sides are even. Double-sided tape is great because it helps to hold panels and hems and seams together so they don't move when you take it to the sewing machine and sew them. Now she's going to use the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic sewing guide here to keep her stitch at the right location so her stripes are all the same. So here she's positioned her needle right where that mark is on the fabric and then she'll move the fabric back, do some reversing and sew down the length of these two panels, sewing them together. We are not creating an overlapping seam and we're not creating a semi-flat felled seam either. We're just creating one stitch down the center and that edge of the seam will be hidden inside the center of our hammock. Those two panels have now been sewn together. Unfortunately, we need a third panel. And uh, that's because our fabric width is 60 inches and we're creating an envelope so we can insert polyester batting. So we're using double-sided tape along the edge of those, one of those panels. And now we're cutting a tan umbrella. This will be on the bottom side of our hammock. So we're cutting it to 99 inches and we'll base that to one of the edges of those striped fabrics. This umbrella marine grade or awning grade fabric does not have a right side or a wrong side, but uh, we did face the fabric so the outside surfaces are facing each other. Those first two panels we sewed, the seam determines which is the right side and the wrong side. So the wrong side is facing up right now. And we reverse at the beginning and the end just as we did with the first two panels. Now we have three panels sewn together. They're way too big but we needed the third one for the size requirements. She's now measuring the length of the fabric and she needs to measure out to 119 inches. Our finished size should be 59 inches when we're done. And she started at 119 and measures all the way down here to zero and marks the uh, tan fabric, which will be on the bottom side of our hammock. Then she measures over to that location that she marked and measures from the opposite end to make it a little bit easier and uses a yardstick to mark those locations so she can now strike a line. Again, because all of our uh, edges are going to be concealed or hemmed, we're going to use scissors, no reason to use a hot knife, to cut the umbrella fabric. Now we'll place 129 basting seam tape along the edge of the tan fabric and we'll base the assembly together. What will be the outside surfaces are facing each other. The underside or inside is up. We'll take it to the sewing machine and sew a half inch inside the edge of the fabric. That's our seam allowance. Now we have a tubular assembly that is almost sewn together. Now she'll take the tubular assembly and turn it so that it's right side out. While she's doing that, let's discuss using a 60 inch fabric. 
If you are using a 60 inch fabric, you can just use two panels, lay them on top of each other, and create a half inch seam down both edges. And now you've accomplished the same thing that we're doing here with three panels. Once the hammock fabric is right side out, we can be sure that the tan stripe in the center is centered. We'll do that by measuring the sides, ensuring that they are of equal size from the left side to the right side. Since we have three panels that were uh, 46 inches in width before they were cut to size, we have to be sure that those three panels are centered or the tan panel is centered. So that's what we're doing here. If you used a 60 inch fabric, you wouldn't have to worry about centering it. It would already be centered perfectly because the panels would be laying directly on top of each other. Now Angela is pinning the sides with uh, straight pins or multi-use pins to ensure that the assembly stays centered as she takes it and sews the sides. So she'll do that all the way down each one of the sides to center the assembly. A pin will be inserted about every few feet all the way down both sides of the running length until she's ensured that everything is centered appropriately. We're going to skip ahead here. Once it is, we'll take it over to the Sayre 111 sewing machine and we're going to use the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide here and we're going to create a stitch that is approximately one inch from the edge of the fold. That's one inch in. This stitch ensures that our panels will stay centered. If you did 60 inch fabric with just the fabric laying on top of each other, this stitch on this long side and the second long side would probably not be required. Then pull the pins and do the same to the opposite side. We'll not be showing all this. On the open ends of the fabric, the short sides, we're going to create a stitch that's approximately a quarter inch to a half inch inside that edge. We'll be eventually cutting off the excess fabric here so this stitch will be gone but this stitch will help hold everything nice and flat so that's what Angela is doing here she's ensuring that everything is nice and flat then she puts the stitch down this open end of the fabric and she'll do the same thing to the opposite end keep the stitch about a quarter inch away from the edge of the fabric because we're going to be cutting that stitch off here we are doing it to the opposite end on the two short ends, we'll be creating a slight convex curve. This curve will help to create a small dip in the hammock to help to keep the occupant from feeling like they may fall out of the hammock. To create that curve, Angela measures in one and a half inches on each side. She'll mark it with a soapstone pencil. She'll then fold it in half to find the center of the hammock. And she'll mark that location as well with a soapstone pencil. This is an easy way to create a curve. After that is done, then she'll fold the lip of the fabric over to find the quarter position of the fabric and she'll mark it on the fold and also on the flat piece underneath the fold. At that quarter location, she will mark the fabric in three quarter of an inch because we are using one and a half inch curve here. If you were using a one inch curve, you would use a half inch at these locations. You'll mark it on the folded portion and also the flat portion underneath the fold. Now we can simply use our yardstick and line it up to the mark on the end with the quarter position mark and strike a line from the quarter position all the way to the end of the fabric. This is a quick and easy way to make a curve. Obviously it's not a gentle curve, it has straight legs, but it works nicely to make a dip to hold the occupant in the hammock. And then at the center location, just mark it all the way to the center spot from the quarter position. And do the same thing on the opposite half. Once that's done, we can cut it with scissors. We're going to be creating a double hem here, so no reason to use the hot knife. That cuts off our stitch that we created earlier. And you'll do the same thing to the opposite end. 
Now the two ends are open again. We'll now insert a polyester batting inside of the cover. And we're going to cut the batting so that it's five to six inches shorter than the actual length of our hammock cover at this point. We're going to be creating a double hem, but we're not taking that into calculation yet. Then we'll fold our batting twice so that it's easier to stuff into the cover. Open up the cover and place it inside and then smooth it all out so that it's nice and flat. This will take a little bit of effort, but the nice thing is you can get to it from both this side and the opposite side. The batting should be perfectly centered inside the cover so that it's away from the two open ends. The batting available from Sayerite is about 55 inches in width, so it's almost a perfect fit considering all the sewing that we've already done. It's going to lay pretty much perfectly flat and a little bit off from the stitches on the sides. Now we're going to pin it shut on the open ends. Then we'll be creating a stitch after everything's held in place along these open ends to hold it in place so that it's easy to create our double hem. First be sure to pin it so that everything's nice and flat. Now we're creating a stitch that's about a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric. You'll do this on both open ends. To create pleats, we're going to place them about every four inches apart. So Angela's measuring about every four inches and marking the fabric. There she will create a stitch to hold the, the cover and the batting in position. So she's just going to sew down following these stripes on the fabric. If your fabric does not have stripes, you may need to mark with a soapstone pencil or a pencil lightly all the way down so you can follow your pencil mark. Here she's just following the stripes of the fabric. And she's sewing right through both the top side and the bottom side of the fabric with the polyester batting in the center. This keeps the batting in position and also creates nice pleats. Since this fabric is about 57 inches now, we have to roll the fabric to get it underneath the arm of the sewing machine to create the pleats that are more in the center of the hammock. She does some reversing at the beginning and sews all the way through and does some reversing at the end. Let's move on. Here's what our pleats look like when we're done. They're about every four inches apart except for in the center. We probably should have put a pleat there as well, but we decided not to. All right, we have a lot of bulk fabric, especially where the uh, panels are joined together. So here Angela's gonna cut in approximately an inch right over where the seam is and cut that out because we're gonna be using a one inch spur grommet. And after the double hem, that's a lot of layers for that one inch spur grommet to go through. So cutting out the fabric like she's doing here, especially on the seams, is important. I would not do it anywhere else. So at those two locations. Now if you just uh, sewed a 60 inch panel on top of another 60 inch panel, this will not be required. Now we use double sided tape along the edge and create our double hem. This is the double sided tape part number 129. Fold it in to approximately an inch. That will hide that stitch that we created at an inch location that was used to hold the uh, ends shut. And then once that's done all the way down its length, we'll place another row of double-sided tape on top of this hem and finish it off with our second fold, which creates the double hem. Hopefully your batting is far enough away so you don't sew through it. It is okay if you do sew through the batting, if your batting is a little bit long, but it's uh, typically best not to have your batting in the double hem. Then we'll create a stitch right along that inner edge. One stitch only. If you'd like two on the outer edge as well, you can do that as well. We're going to show a spreader bar and it already has the line inserted. We'll be showing that in a later step. We'll take the spreader bar and position it at the end of the hammock and mark each one of those locations for the grommets. Those grommets should be directly opposite of the holes in the spreader bar. 
except for the extreme holes at the ends. That's where the rope will be inserted. Then we'll install a grommet at each one of those locations. We're using the number one hole cutter and a heavy mallet with a cutting board on the bottom side to prevent damage to the hole cutter. Then we're going to use a number one spur grommet die set and insert the spur grommet. The male portion goes on the anvil below, gets punched through the hole, and the female portion with the teeth gets laid on top. And then you use the, the uh, tool to press it in position, or hammer it in position, I should say, and the number one spur grommet is installed. At the beginning of this video, we made the clue harness and we also made the spreader bar. We're now going to show you how to insert the clue rope into each one of the holes of the spreader bar. Pinch the line together and push it through each one of the holes uh, and do that procedure for each one of the loops. Be sure to follow the order of the clue. So make sure the loop goes in the correct hole so they don't get crisscrossed. And skip that hole all the way at the end where the line will be inserted in a later step. Do that all the way down the length of the spreader bar. Once you're done with that, lay the hammock so the outside surface or the top surface is facing the tabletop and run it through each one of the grommets as shown. The bottom side is up. And then you'll take your rope that you've inserted into one of the holes on the end and run it through each one of the ends of the loop as shown here on the video. We'll do that all the way along the length of the hammock. When you get to the end, then tighten up each one of the loops from the clue assembly so the board comes close to the hammock. and then we'll feed that rope through the spreader bar at the end and create a knot. Be sure the rope is nice and tight. Feed it through the hole. You can use an awl or a sharp object to push the rope through the hole if it's a little bit snug. This is a quarter inch rope. Then create a knot on the top of the spreader bar. Follow that same procedure for the opposite end. And your hammock is now complete. This hammock will accommodate a mounting structure that's about 14 to 16 feet apart. We're using a frame and have attached our hammock with a chain and a shackle. The shackle is available from Sailrite. Stay tuned and you'll see the materials lists and the tools that were used to build this pleated polyester filled sombrella hammock. Then directly after that, we'll show you how to make a pillow for your hammock. As was discussed in the video, if you used a 60 inch sombrella fabric, you would only need 5.5 yards for one hammock. If you use a 46 inch width, you'll need three panels, so you'll need 8.25 yards. And now for the final portion of this video, we're going to show you how to make a hammock pillow that you can add to any one of the hammocks shown in this video. How to make a hammock pillow is shown next. We think it looks great and is also very comfortable. Since we're using a 46 inch width fabric, we have to cut two panels and each of these panels are cut to 29 inches and laying beside each other they're going to be too long because we basically only need about a 58 inch wide pillow. We're going to put these fabrics together and sew so the stripes are even. Uh, we already determined the distance that we need to create a stitch here and so we're going to use that deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide here as a table saw fence would be used to help guide our sewing. If you just used a 60 inch fabric, you would not have to join two panels together. Now from the center seam, where we seam these two panels together, we're going to find the center and mark it to 60 inches in width. When finished, it'll be about 59 inches. We'll cut it to size with scissors. No reason to use a hot knife because the inside edges of this will be on the inside of the pillow. Then we'll fold it in half so the wrong side is facing out. Sombrella marine grade fabric does not have a wrong side or a right side and the Sombrella awning does not either. 
but our seam determines which is the wrong side, so that's why we did that. Then we sew the two short sides all the way to the bottom edge, reversing at the beginning and the end. Here we are sewing that uh, second short end. Same procedure. Then we'll turn the assembly right side out. Grab the corners and invert the entire assembly. Now we're going to take some polyester batting. This is a 55 inch wide polyester batting and cut it to approximately 25 inches. Then we're going to fold it in half and we're going to stuff it inside the pillow form cover. This will create two layers of batting. Then we're going to sew across the entire bottom uh, opening creating a single hem on both the top side and the bottom side of the fabric as we sew. So here at the beginning we did some reversing and Angela will carefully fold the assembly as she sews. You could use multi-use pins if you would like to make sure that everything stays in the right position. But Angela is pretty efficient at this and she creates her hems as she sews. You notice she sews about a foot, stops, creates her hems, and then does the same procedure over again. Bury your needle every time you make a stop so that you do not lose the position of where you left off sewing. To make this long pillow look like it's a pillow for a two-person hammock, we're going to sew right down the center of the pillow. Basically right where we created that seam to join the two panels together. This is sewing through two layers of polyester batting and the multi-layers of fabric. So this may be difficult for a regular home sewing machine. It is not difficult for the Sayerite 111 sewing machine or even an ultra feed machine. If your machine balks at this, you could create this stitch prior to installing the polyester batting and cut the batting in half and shorten its length slightly. So you could stuff it into two uh, sides of the pillow cover and then sew off the bottom edge. We've made this pillow so it's completely removable from the hammock. So we're going to use some scrap fabric and make some ties. That's what we're going to do next. We're now taking some of the scrap fabric and cutting the tan portion out so that we can make pillow ties. We'll take double-sided tape and place it in the middle. Now you could take double-sided tape and place it on the two ends, but Angela has just placed it in the center and then she based these uh, two long sides in place. Notice it's not sticking very well because there's only half the double-sided tape holding each one of the sides. And then she takes it to the sewing machine and creates a straight stitch down the folded edge and that makes a great tie for the pillow. Now she'll fold that assembly in half and sew it onto the pillow. She's going to sew one on each corner where she sewed the pillow shut and she's going to make a slight V so she doesn't have to go through all the multiple layers and that also makes it easier to tie it off. So a little bit of a V here and then sew right through it, reversing a few times to lock the tie onto the edge of the pillow. She's going to do it on both of the corners and also at the center location. We will not show that. Now we'll take our pillow over to the hammock and feed it through one of the grommets and then a second grommet that is right next to that first grommet. And now you know how to make a pillow for your hammock. This is for a two-person hammock. And now we'll display the tools and the materials used to build this hammock pillow. As always, Sailrite stands ready to help you with your next canvas or upholstery or sail making project. If you need help with any fabric selection for your next hammock, be sure to give us a call at Sailrite. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sailrite website or subscribe to the Sailrite YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sailrite that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.